Hello and welcome back. Today, let's have a look how we can warp areas of an image using the deform filter, which is also known as Puppet Warp for Photoshop users. Let's suppose you have this image and we want to use the following text in the composition. I know, not very original, but let us all just imagine that this is a divine piece of text which adds some special meaning to this photo. As you notice, the foot of the left at least is covering the text. We can of course make the text smaller to make it fit in the available area. Or we can try to move the foot so it doesn't cover the text, which we will do in this video. One way of achieving this is by using the liquify filter. Here is a copy of the layer where I applied the liquify filter end result is definitely pretty good. Let's have a quick look on what I did in the liquify filter. As you see, I have frozen the bottom part of the image and the body. With the push tool, I then moved up the leg and the foot. If you want to know more about the liquify filter, check out my earlier video explaining how to use it. I will put the link in the description. Even though the liquify filter did a great job, let's have a look at another method on how we can warp the image. I will duplicate the original image first, as the next filter I'm going to use is destructive. The filter we are going to use is the distort deform filter. And if you have used Photoshop, you might notice it has similarities with what is called puppet warp in Photoshop. The deform filter in Affinity works by setting anchor points and these anchor points can be used to warp the image. Just like with Liquify, the first thing I like to do is to set anchor points on areas I do not want to move. I like to call them protection points. In this example, the area we want to protect will be the bottom part of the image. Now that we have set our protection points, Let's add a point below the left foot and move it up. Nice! As the point was on the center of the foot, the foot gets a bit distorted. I will add some additional points in order to make sure the foot looks normal. I will also make the leg a bit longer by adding a control point above the knee and move this up. Again, I will use a protection point just to make sure the body stays in place. To give the image more dynamics, I want the athletes to lean more forward. I can achieve this by adding some additional points on the top body areas and move these a little bit to the left. What I like about the deform filter is the way it warps the whole image. Everything feels linked to each other, which allows for interesting and more organic results. Here is a quick tip for you. While you are working on the deform, you can enable and disable the working layer. This can help you to easily determine the effect of the changes. We also have a master slider, which controls the intensity of the warp. This way you can easily dim down the warp if needed. Looks pretty good to me. Let me apply this and let's have another look at the before and the after. In this image, the background is perfect, as you will not see the warp distortion. If you have a more challenging background, you can mask out your subject and apply the deform filter only on the subject. Let me show you what I mean. After I disable the current layers, I will open up this group on which I have already separated the athletes and the background. Here is the background. And here are the athletes on their own separate layer. Now I can apply the deform filter on the athletes. Before I do that, I will first duplicate the layer with command J and then rasterize it. The reason why I rasterize it is because I want a layer without a mask. Why? Because the deform filter will only deform the image and not the mask. Let me turn off the background and apply the deform filter. As I do not have a background, 
There is no need to set protection points. Just with a couple of anchor points, I can warp the image in a very easy way. Also, because I don't have a background, I can now easily adjust the position of the second runner and move her a bit to the top. Let's apply and turn on the background. And this is how it used to be. Pretty awesome. Let's have a look at two more examples. And here is the next example. And you might have guessed. I will reposition the lag on the left of this acrobatic beach guy. Let me duplicate it with command J and open up the deform filter from the filters distort menu. Just as before, I will add some protection anchor points around the subject and the knee. After adding a point around the foot for the leg we want to move, I can move the bottom part of the leg to a position I like. You notice the foot is out of proportion. Looks like he needs a size 10 shoe. So let me add another point at the tip of the foot, which generates a preposterous result. The foot has even become bigger. This is due to because this resets this point to its original position. However, I can now move this part of the foot until it looks normal again. If you watched closely, you might have noticed that the warping also affected the sea line. So let's add a couple of protection points there to reset them to their original position. Let me apply it and have a look at what we did. Not bad at all. And now just because we can, I will remove the surfer using the in paint tool as he is distracting us from the cool upside down guy. Here is the final example I will share with you. We have this meditating lady. Well, I guess she is meditating, but I could be wrong. She seems to be happy, but I'm not 100% sure. I just want to make sure that everybody looking at the photo will see that she is very happy. So I want to do this. A smile is worth thousand words, they say. Or not. Anyway, let's see how we can make her smile. I will duplicate the layer with Command J and open up the deform filter. I'm guessing you know my next step. Right, some protection points around her face and then a protection point in the middle of her mouth followed by two points which I will use to put the smile on her face. Probably the quickest way I made a lady smile. I wish it was always this easy to put a smile on a lady. While we're at it, let me also adjust her eyes a little bit to give her a more relaxing look. Just with the liquify, we can also use this filter to slim down areas on the body. With the following control point, I'm going to make her neck a bit slimmer. Let's apply and look at what we did by enabling and disabling the changes. Pretty awesome. Well, maybe a bit overdone, but just for tutorial purposes. Just like I mentioned with the liquify video, the changes you should make with this filter should be very subtle and controlled. You don't want to be overdoing with this filter unless you're trying to create an artistic effect. Well, I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and until next time.